Okay, it's now time for members' statements. The member for Park High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Today, our National Day of Action on the Overdose Crisis, we commemorate the over 10,000 lives lost across Canada since 2016 from the poisonous drug and overdose crisis. I want to recognize the tireless work of harm reduction and healthcare workers working the front lines of this public health emergency. They have steadfastly led the way, providing healthcare overdose services that have prevented the deaths of thousands of people because governments have failed to do so. Make no mistake, Speaker, this crisis has escalated due to government inaction and has become a public health emergency because both Liberal and Conservative governments have shown that they do not value people who use drugs. Instead, people are criminalized. But not everyone is criminalized equally. Drug prohibition is rooted in racism. Black, Indigenous and racialized people and those living in poverty suffer disproportionately in terms of incarceration rates and overdose deaths. Criminalization drives stigma and discrimination. Stigma and discrimination kill. Bad drug policy and government inaction kills. Across the province, people are taking to the streets because they are tired of watching their loved ones die of preventable overdose deaths. They are calling on their government to invest in evidence-based harm reduction strategies and frontline services that will save lives. I stand in solidarity and I call on this government to act based on evidence, not based on ideology. It's time to end the war on drugs and on those who use them. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Whitby. Thank you, uh, Speaker. And I'm pleased to highlight the Durham Wellness Hub at Durham College in Whitby, launched by Durham MP Aaron O'Toole. The hub will help connect people seeking mental health support to the dozens of local services offered in the region of Durham, Speaker. The Durham Wellness Hub is an online space linking youth and parents with mental health resources and supports within Durham Region, informing the community on mental well-being. Speaker, many families, young people and seniors face enormous difficulties navigating the system, and this new hub makes it a one-stop shop. Speaker, as MP O'Toole pointed out at the launch, there are many groups offering great mental health support in the region, but access can be challenging. Speaker, the Wellness Hub has now filled that gap making it easier for Durham residents to access mental health care in a timely way. Speaker, they deserve no less. Member Statements, the member for London North Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Over the last several weeks, I've heard from hundreds of Londoners over email, phone and at the doorstep about their opposition to this government's cuts to education. There are schools in London North Centre that are currently at more than 100% capacity, including Eagle Heights and Stony Creek Public Schools. But instead of addressing overcrowded classrooms, the government's 2019 budget actually cuts over a billion dollars from our education system. This will lead to even larger class sizes where students can't get the help they need. These cuts will hurt young students like Audrey. Audrey loves school, but struggles to meet her grade expectations for reading and writing. She's able to see, succeed, however, because she has a teacher that takes the extra time to ensure that she progresses. Audrey's mother, Ashley, worries that removing class caps on, size, on class sizes will deprive Audrey of critical mentorship opportunities. Speaker, we can't afford to let Audrey and kids like her get left behind. Ontario can build a world-class public education system, but first, we need a government that will stand up and champion our students. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Oakville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. April is Be a Donor Month, mm -hmm. an effort by the Trillium Gift of Life Network to raise awareness of the importance of organ and tissue donation and transplantation. We should encourage all our constituents to consider registering as an organ and tissue donor. Here, here. In Ontario, CEO Ronnie Gafsey and her team at the Trillium Gift of Life Network work hard to support those in need of life-saving transplant. Over 1,600 Ontarians currently await a life-saving organ transplant, wow. and every three days in this province, someone dies a preventable death waiting for a transplant. In my riding of Oakville, there are currently 21 patients on a waiting list for life-saving organ donation. According to the Trillium Gift of Life Network, more than 85% of Ontarians are in favour of organ donation, though only one in three Ontarians have actually registered that consent. 
The average registration rate in Ontario is 33.4 per cent. Ontarian lives are at risk, and this must be improved. By registering to become a donor, you have the power to save or change somebody's life. Registration for donation is convenient and easily accessible. Simply register online at beadonor.ca or visit any Service Ontario location throughout the province and talk to your family about this important life-saving decision. I would encourage all of my legislative colleagues to consider helping raise awareness of this important life-saving gift of life. Thank you very much, Mr. Well said, Steve. Very good. The member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've written another letter to the government. Dear government, have you heard? The ONDP now has an official Black Caucus. And guess who's the chair? It's me! <laughs> I can't even remember the number of times that I have stood in this House and asked that we confront anti-black racism and that we do so on a systems level. And friends, this new role is both exciting and a little daunting because it means rethinking the way that we create policy. It means thinking in a new way about the legislation that we pass, and it means being ready to talk about black people. It means realizing that the needs of black communities are unique because of a history of oppression right here on this land. In 1867, members of this assembly stood in the House and questioned whether black folks were people, deserving of freedom, justice, and protection. And now it's 2019, and as the chair of the Black Caucus, it's my responsibility to continue that fight, to make sure that black folks are represented in this legislature and served by its legislation. It's my job to bring you this important message. Do better. Ontario's watching. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of attending the Lieutenant Governor's ceremony to present the Order of Plaid Medal, bestowed upon one of my riding's finest, Francois Bassinet. This, in this intentionally recognized award honors those who have distinguished themselves through their service to French-speaking communities. In addition, to coordinating the construction of Cormel's Monument to Francophonie, Francois has been a recipient of multiple honours for his educational and cultural commitment. Like in 2014, the Order to Francophonie to Prescott and Russell. In 2017, the prestigious Comrade de Son Associé Francophone and the Cormel Regional Promenade d'Honneur. And in 2018, the Richelieu de la Francophonie, a lifetime educator from Lesa de School to the presidency of the Eastern Ontario Catholic District School Board. Francois serves in, as an ambassador to all Franco-Ontarians. Through his promotion, education, and pro the preservation of French language and culture in Cornwall and Cornwall and area. Francois is a, the husband of Colette for 46 years and a father and grandfather, and a man who embodies the spirit and community of the people of Stormont, Dundas, and South Congary. Solicitation. Congratulations. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Brampton Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Um, it's an honour to rise here today and share that in Brampton Centre, we had our first ever Youth Council meeting um, this past Friday. It was a great turnout. Uh, we had 12 youth um, from across the riding participate in our first ever Youth Council meeting. In the council meeting, young people raised concerns about this government's direction and the cuts that they were making to the education system and our health care system in Brampton. Young people raised concerns about crumbling schools, packed classrooms, and the fact that they weren't getting the same opportunities as the members that are sitting here today. They are very concerned that their gen next generation is not going to have the same economic opportunities and educational opportunities as all of us once did. Many young people in Brampton Centre are also concerned about the cuts to our health care system. While we have one of the longest waits in the province in our Brampton Civic Hospital, many young people are concerned that, in addition to those wait times, they aren't able to access vital mental health services. They're also worried that, in addition to those cuts, that they aren't going to get the supports they need in the classrooms when they try to access their guidance counselor or their teacher for those mental health supports. They wanted this government to do better. They wanted them 
to listen to the voices of young people across this province who are raising and sounding the alarm bells, and they are concerned about the direction we are taking this province. They are concerned about the future of this economy, and they want this government to ensure that their voices are heard and reflected in the legislation that is being created here. Thank you. The member for Flamborough, Glenville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to raise awareness of Advanced Care Planning Day in Canada. It's a reminder that we all may face difficult medical decisions, and there may come a time when we can't communicate or make decisions for ourselves, either in an emergency or in the latter part of our life. We have to choose someone who can do that for us, a substitute decision maker, often a family member, someone with whom we trust, often someone with shared values. Advanced care planning is more than talking about whether or not we want certain treatments. It's about helping our substitute decision makers understand why we would make certain choices about our care so that they can do what's right for us. Take a few minutes today and talk to a loved one about what matters most to you. And make sure you have a substitute decision maker who can speak for you when you simply can't speak for yourself. Hospice Palliative Care Ontario is at Queen's Park today to help MPPs understand advanced care planning and to help us inform our constituents about the importance of those crucial conversations that will guide our caregivers as we age. Hospice Palliative Care Ontario and its members have been driving quality, value and true partnership in palliative care in Ontario for over 35 years. Hospice is health and social care that is working and working well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Richmond Hill. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to share my family's personal experience with patient-centered health care. In January, my mother-in-law fell and was hospitalized. She was dismissed and fell again in a short time later, and she was again hospitalized. My husband took a leave of absence from work to care for her 24 hours, but it was far beyond what he could handle. In March, before she was dismissed from hospital, she was connected with home care. We are so thankful that this is the start when we experience the support from the improved Health Ontario care system. Realizing the level of health care that she needs, a PSW was allowed my husband a couple of hours of sleep when they come to support. She was visited by physiotherapists with treatment and exercises to help her to recover from the falls. And then she was also put on the waiting list for a long-term care bed. In just over a month, actually last week, she was admitted into long-term care home. My daughter also experienced home care after she gave birth to my grandson, Ryan, in February. She was only five pounds, three ounces at birth. But with the care team support, we just celebrated 100 days, and she, he is now a chubby baby of over 10 pounds. Our family is so thankful for the improved patient-centered health care, this integrated care that we need for our family mem members. Thank you. Thank you, Daisy. Includes our member statements for this afternoon. Reports by committees. I beg to